Time constant, very good. That's the last one. The time constant number five. The symbol for time constant, Gary. Tau. Yeah, Gary. <laughs> the dimensions for the time constant, Nitish. It is in a second. The only equation we have right now for the time constant, don't you worry, we'll have more later. The only equation we have for time constant right now is what, David? Rc. R times C. Resistance times the capacitance is the time constant for an Rc circuit. Something else new to add to our table of friends, Sarah Jane Jones. Resistance. Resistance will be the second one. Resistance, symbol for resistance, John? R. R, it could be capital, it could be lowercase. Under what circumstance would it be a lowercase R? John? If it's within a light battery. Generally, we use a lowercase for an internal resistance of a battery or power source or something, something like that. <coughs> Dimensions for resistance, Loki? Oh, ohms. Ohms, what is the symbol we use for an ohm? Pottorella? Upside down horseshoe. <laughs> What kind of horseshoe is that? It's uh, upside down. <laughs> unlucky. Uh, it's, well, all the, yes, unlucky. <laughs> it's an unlucky horseshoe because all the luck has fallen out. What is an ohm? Um, is it like moles per amp? It is volts per amp. Uh oh, I squished it in. Oh well, I have to shove it in there. That'll be fun. We have our equation for resistance. We have actually several. We'll start with the, just the basic equation for resistance. Dorfson. Well, um, well, like right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, R equals Sorry, what? Okay, usually we do the, the electric potential difference equals current times resistance, yes, but this is the way I usually write it. We also have equations for <coughs> resistors in series. <laughs> resistors in series. Tyler, the equation. Um, R1 plus R2 plus all the other ones is the total resistance. Good. <laughs> that is an awesome entrance. <laughs> We also have resistors in <laughs> parallel. The equation for resistors in <laughs> parallel. Uh, Tim. Uh, parentheses one over resistor one plus one over resistor two plus resistor two power negative. Good. When we have resistors in series, what is true of the current, Mr. P? The currents are equal. The currents are equal. Good. What about the electric? Potential difference when you have resistors in series, Mike. Uh, it's like it, you add them. You, the electric potential difference is <laughs> Resistors in parallel. What do we know about currents for resistors in parallel? Um, the, the the currents add in parallel. And for the electric potential difference in parallel tracks. They are all equal. Good. More friends. Three more friends to add to our table of friends. Nick. Charge carrier density. Charge carrier density is actually not, it's going to be a part of, we can't add everything, so no, charge carrier density is not current. current. We'll just start with current. The Current is the name, the symbol for current, Bill? I. I, dimensions for current, Michael? Um, amps. Amps, what is an amp, Eugen? Um, it's a coulomb per second. Coulombs per second. We have two different equations for current. Please give me one of the two, Glenn. Current equals. Uh, v over R. V, well, we already have that one up here. Sorry, that's in terms of electric potential difference. More basic. <coughs> I 
The derivative of charge as a function of time, if we're talking about instantaneous current, it would be delta Q over delta T if we're talking about average current. True. And we also have another equation for current, which is Nick? N A V sub D times Q. In this equation, N is what? Jenkins? Is it the number of charges? No. Uh, it is actually not. It's, it has to do with the number of charges, but it's not specifically the number of charges. Sarah Jane Jones. Charge carrier density? Charge carrier density. So it's the number of charges per unit volume. A in this equation. <clears throat> Zach? Cross sectional area. V sub D. Travis? V sub D. Hamza? Drift velocity. Give me a, an idea of the magnitude of the drift velocity in a normal circuit. M1. Very small would be good enough. Sure, 0.1 millimeters per second would be fine. And Q, Jenkins. Just the charge. The charge on the charge carriers, whatever charge carriers we have to be talking about. This equation right here is on your equation sheet, but you need to be able to derive this equation. Two more friends to add to our table of friends. One's going to go to here, one's going to go to here. Bless you, and bless you. Hillary. Resistivity. Symbol for resistivity. Um, oh, yeah. Bless your name. Uh, rho. Rho. Dimensions for resistivity. De Silva? Four over resistance. No. Dimensions for resistivity. Meg. Ohms times meters. It is just an ohm meter. Ohm meters resistivity. Uh, equation for resistivity, usually we give it in terms of resistance. So resistance is equal to the resistivity multiplied by length divided by the cross-sectional area. Resistivity. What is the difference between resistivity and resistance? Winter. Uh, resistivity is how resistant? Sorry, say again. Resistivity is? Actually, resistance is how resistant something is. Resistivity is slightly different. You've got to understand the difference between resistivity and resistance. John? Resistivity is like a property of a like, wire. Uh, but what, yes, but what about the wire? What, it's a property of the wire. What will give it this property? The material. The material it's made of. So it's a material property of the wire, whereas resistance, Gary? Object based? Is it based on a specific object? So it includes both the material and the shape, the geometric shape of the object. So resistance refers to a specific object, whereas resistivity refers to a material. It's a material specification. The last one, which goes between resistivity and the time constant, is electric power. Symbol for electric power, Michael. P. Uppercase, lowercase. Uppercase. uppercase, not to be confused with a lowercase p. Note we have rho, uppercase p, and lowercase p. Rho, not to be confused with volumetric charge density, for example. Lowercase p, Emily stands for? Momentum. Momentum. So many different things that look like p. Power, dimensions for power moment? Uh, watts. Watts. What is a watt? Meg? Joules per second. Joules per second. Three equations for power. Hillary, please give me all three. Uh, I times V. Please don't say I times V. Say. Uh, current times uh, electric potential. Um, current squared times resistance. And electric potential squared over resistance. What word are you missing when you say electric potential? Difference. Technically, I'm just I've got to get the whole thing. It's electric potential difference. This is, we have added to our table of friends. Let's see what else we need to fill in. 
Uh, just a few little things here. Uh, we have something also called current density. What is the symbol for current density? J. J. The equation for current density. Michael. No. What is not the answer? The equation for current density. Give it a try. Something. Current density. I over A. A. Uh, is current density. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We have two different terms. We have one delta V sub T and we have one EMF. Delta V sub T stands for, Meg? Uh, change in electric potential difference. No? Does not stand terminal. for the, the terminal electrical potential difference or the terminal voltage. EMF, the Silva stands for? Electromotive force. What is the difference between the terminal voltage and the EMF? Emily? The EMF is the ideal voltage of the battery, and the terminal, terminal voltage takes into account the system. I'll put uh, actual here, or, or me actually I'll put measure, it's a better term for it. It's the measured potential difference it takes into account, as you said, the internal resistance. So the measure. And we figured it out that the terminal voltage is equal to the EMF minus the current through the battery multiplied by the internal resistance, note the lowercase r. So as the current through the circuit goes up, the um, terminal voltage is actually going to go down, even though the EMF is going to stay the same. We have Kirchhoff's rules. Um, Travis, please, please spell Kirchhoff. <laughs> K I R C H O F F. Very close. Miller. There's two H's. There's two H's. Kirchhoff's <laughs> rules. We have Kirchhoff's rules. There are two of them. Please give me Nick one of Kirchhoff's rules. And the other Kirchhoff rule, the symbol? Um, two currents added in a direction. I'm sorry, say that again. Two currents added in a direction? Add at a junction. Add at a junction. Or, it's, I mean, depending on the source of track. I agree. It has to do with currents at a junction, but why don't we finish that statement? Um, currents entering a junction in the same direction. Add. That's not complete. I, mean, I need the whole thing. Out. Yeah. Close. The net, thank you, Sierra. The net current <laughs> in equals the net current out. That is the second of Kirchhoff's rules. Please remember when you use this, you want to set up a matrix. Before you do so, you have to show the equations that you're going to use in that matrix. Then you have to indicate that you're using row reduced echelon form. You have to give your final matrix answer. You need to give your answer with current directions. And you need to check your answer with the extra loop. So you have to first derive the equations using the rules for Kirchhoff's rules. Then you create your matrix. Indicate that you're using row reduced echelon form. Give your matrix answer, which you got from your calculator. And then you please give your answer with current directions. Um, and of course, check with the loop. We have the concept of an RC circuit. In an RC circuit, we derived the charge as a function of time on the capacitor and the current as a function of time through the resistor for both charging and discharging a capacitor through a resistor. You need to be able to derive these. You should know the limits. Where do the currents start and end? You need to know the shapes of the graphs. And you should know the general shape of the equations. 
There's a lot about RC circuits that you need to know. And we've gone through all of it. We're not going to go through it again. You also need to know about an ammeter and a voltmeter. You need to know where they go in a circuit. Do they go in series or in parallel? And you need to know whether the ammeter and the resistor have high or low resistances. And you should understand why. Again, those are all things we went through, so I'm not going to go through that again right now. There. What does it say on the board under grass? Uh, equations. So you should know like the general shape of the equations for charging and discharging. Um, it's just helpful when doing problems. 